Good morning. This is Bill from Out of Europa, Naples, and today I've got this bird. Look at him hanging out right here. You think he might be looking for worms or something, but I'm afraid he's going to call in his buddies and do one of those Alfred Hitchcock style things. One can only hope not. Uh, lovely, crisp Florida morning, and I do have. Frankly, what I consider to be one of the best-looking 997 Cabrios that I have seen. Uh, this is a 2006. It's the first year 997 Cabrio. Uh, it's finished in speed yellow outside. It's got natural leather inside. And it was one of these... Um, and what if you, it's sort of no holds barred, no money is object, object is no money, money is no object type things. Oh my God, I'm rambling today. I, tell you, I haven't slept in days properly. Too much coffee, too much stress. Uh, I don't know, I'm telling you, that cabin in the woods looks better and better all the time. Uh, anyway, one of those money is no object type things. The uh, people retired down here from Canada. Uh, they went to Porsche of Naples right across the street there. Actually, when they bought this, it was in a different location. That's fairly new building, irrelevant. And uh, they walked in, they went to their top salesman and said, I want a 911 convertible. And uh, my son is going to call you and he's going to outfit it, tell you how he wants to get it. It for us and obviously the uh, son uh, really didn't care how much money was spent on this thing because he went a little bit bananas so uh, anyway let's get into it a little bit of course nothing in the world is more iconic than a Porsche 911 except maybe for a VW Beetle <coughs> And, uh, you know, it's a sports car that has been around for a very, very long time. Uh, one could also argue that it's been very incorrectly engineered from day one, that uh, there was a giant engineering mistake that they spent, uh, you know, what, eight, nine generations trying to fix. And that is, uh, as P.G. O'Rourke put it in a 1980 issue of Car and Driver, uh, that it's an ass engine Nazi slot car. And uh, indeed it is. So the uh, rear engine hangs in back of the rear wheels, uh, which is, you know, it presents some challenges to overcome. Uh, you know, in the 60s, 70s, 80s, uh, particularly when these cars were getting very fast, uh, they could be very challenging to drive. And by challenging to drive, what that means is they would kill you. Uh, they had this trailing throttle oversteer. Uh, you go in uh, hot into a corner, uh, you get a little bit scared, you lift, and the rear end would just snap around and send you off into the gully. So, uh, you know, it took a lot of engineering to overcome that and fortunately in this modern era there's a lot more technology available to counterbalance the effects of that in fact uh, with this 997 they've made a very nearly you know perfect weight distribution which is frankly very impressive for a car with an engine out the back uh, anyway the 996 came before this and that car was controversial, as I like to use that word a lot. Uh, and, and by controversial, I mean it really pissed off the Porsche uh, purists. They hated it, uh, and they were destined to hate it. For one thing, it was the first water-cooled 911, and uh, as any purist would tell you, uh, every 911 should be air-cooled, just like every other car on the road. Okay, well, maybe not. Uh, but anyway, they think 911 should be air-cooled. So no matter what the first uh, water-cooled one did, it was destined to be hated. Uh, but they went ahead and gave it Boxster headlamps, uh, which I quite liked. It looked like a Porsche uh, corporate thing, but, uh, you know, the people who sprung the money for the 911 didn't want to look like a Boxster from the front end. And I, you know, I get that. Uh, and there were other things, you know, they had hired some ex-Toyota engineers to uh, help them uh, keep the cost down, make the cars more profitable, uh, which, uh, frankly, Porsche was in financial trouble in the early 90s, and uh, the 996 came along and really helped them, and truth, the Cayenne, uh, which has as much to do with the original bathtub 356 as a, you know, squirrel on the roadside. I mean, it's just completely outside the box. But uh, anyway, the Cayenne sells a ton. But they had to make the 911 profitable, particularly if they were going to carry it forward. Uh, they'd really been trying to replace the 911, uh, you know, for a long time. The 928 that came out in the 70s was originally destined to be the 911's replacement. And uh, that was even more controversial and hated than the, uh, than the 996. 
Anyway, I digress. So the 996 was, you know, not a beloved car. They did some additions. They made it better. Uh, but it really took this generation, the 997, to bring the purists back into the fold, uh, win them over, and make them like uh, current 911s again. And to do that, they, uh, you know, they had to do some tweaking. It's still a basically very similar car to the uh, 996, but they narrowed the body. They uh, made the uh, corners of it more bulbous, you know, sort of traditional Porsche style and uh, brought back a lot of the whirring and clanking and, uh, you know, the strange expensive noises that Porsches are uh, famous for. So here it is, and this was the first year of the Cabrio, which is a very neat car. And this one again, Speed Yellow Natural Leather, it has a Tech Art body package. Uh, Tech Art being a German tuner uh, that's been around for quite a while, I, I don't want to say 20, 30 years, which makes them like grandfathers in the tuner world. And they make beautiful body kits for these cars that the dealers put on and charge a fortune for. And uh, that's what happened here. They also put on incredibly good looking wheels, which I mean, I tell you what, you take a car like the 911 and you decide you're going to make it better, that's pretty ballsy. Uh, you know, really, really is. I mean, it's not an easy car to improve, but uh, Tech Art does manage to do so. Uh, and they go further. They make all sorts of mechanical uh, stuff to make them faster and sleeker and whatnot. And, uh, you know, that's all great stuff. This doesn't have that. This is the uh, absolute standard 911S. Uh, drivetrain, which is absolutely just fine. Uh, but you can see that body kit is lovely. Look at those big xenon lamps and the uh, oval uh, headlamps, you know, more reminiscent of the 993, uh, again, which is what the purists wanted. Uh, these beautiful Tech Art 20 inch alloys with the uh, uh, big disc brakes behind them, vented rotors, uh, big red calipers, uh, really bring this thing down to a stop in a hurry. Uh, big uh, side skirts there from Tech Art, even little mirror inserts uh, to, uh, you know, make it look a little bit more sleek. Uh, really nice additions. Uh, 305 series tires in the back. I mean, those things are O-rings. There's just no sidewall at all. And uh, a very lovely looking uh, rear spoiler that's just right. Uh, they could have made it a bit uh, more ostentatious or tamed it down, and I think they got the, uh, the spoiler just correct. Uh, big, uh, you know, quad pipes there in the back part of that uh, sport package, the S package, and uh, otherwise just a great looking car. Uh, with the top down you can see it's got uh, rollover protection. Uh, those little cutouts will pop out and little bars will come up to save you in the event of calamity. Uh, it's got uh, this uh, big container here for the top when it goes down. You see it's sort of half visible. All very nice. Brown top on this car. And uh, this is a uh, little liftable rear wing. It goes up at like 30, 40 miles, maybe 50 miles an hour uh, to keep the uh, rump end down. Because the convertibles, you know, they're not quite as sleek as the coupes. Uh, they give you a little bit more body lift. Uh, Porsche made this uh, wing on the uh, convertibles raised yeah, a little bit under an inch higher than it does on the coupes, and that uh, takes care of it. Uh, also, if you're beating on the thing and the engine's running hot, it'll lift that wing up to give it better cooling. So with that said, let's start inside the uh, let's start inside the trunk. I don't know what you call it, the trunk. I don't know what you call it on this thing. Okay, so there you see a 3.8 liter flat six. Now this was again a big improvement and the biggest displacement flat six from Porsche uh, when it came out. Uh, gives you about 350 horsepower, about 295 pounds feet of torque. Uh, it is a terrific engine. Also the VarioCam Plus works, uh, you know, VVT type thing. So uh, it gives you optimum uh, lifter cam control through all portions of the rev band and, uh, you know, makes what's already a screaming engine even more responsive. Uh, and it gets even more responsive with the sport setting, which we'll get into. But all very lovely back there, very proper. And uh, despite being a weirdly designed rump engine car, uh, that's uh, it's a nice thing to see when you pop open the, uh, the back. Have a look up front. Even these little trim rings around the lights are part of that tech art package. 
Okay, so everything nice and simple in the frunk, again, a word that I'm not fond of. Uh, you see it has the original accessory windscreen there, the original floor mats, uh, an emergency release for inside. So uh, again, if you put your toddler in the frunk, you have to be a little bit careful. He may be able to get out. So you might want to put some kind of a screw and cover over that so he can't pop it while you're going down the road. Uh, behind here, you'll find the navigation drive and uh, everything nice and proper. Good place to stow weekend luggage. I think there's a bunch of people out there who make fitted luggage for these cars. Probably go to the Porsche dealer and drop 10 grand and get a nice set. So, uh, anyway, all very nice under the frunk. Uh, to close this hood, uh, it's, you know, like many other Porsche, a very light aluminum thing. Uh, you just let it click once to the safety position, put your palm over the Porsche logo, and give it a gentle little press. Do not slam that thing. Do not dent it. Don't do anything other than that to close it, and uh, it'll treat you well. I also like the uh, clear... Uh, running lamps up there, part of the tech art thing, the smoked cornering things, all very cool stuff. Uh, have a look inside. So here you see that beautiful, rich, natural leather. Uh, you know, it's like they had cows rolling around in butter for 10 years before they were skinned and uh, turned into the interior of this car. It is absolutely gorgeous and had a price tag to match. Uh, this thing does have the full leather package, so uh, you get that everywhere, all over the door panels, uh, you know, the armrest, the dashboard. It is gorgeous and well worth the, you know, five grand or whatever the hell it costs to put it on there. This thing's stick at 107 and that's before the tech art stuff so uh, this was a pr pretty expensive piece we have the window sticker and base price 91 so a uh, ton of options in this car <clears throat> you see it has the power seats all very nice uh, you get back here you've got these sort of ridiculous rear seats that you could stuff some Canadians or kids into but uh, whoever goes back there is going to be miserable uh, there is a spot where you can lower that down and turn it into a little cargo area all very nice stuff and uh, you know very classic 911 you can really see the way those fenders bulge out uh, the S is wider than the standard uh, 911 and it really does mimic earlier Porsches all right, let me get the keys out before I get in this thing. I like the Carrera scuff plates, too. Uh, so it's got the key on the left here, Le Mans style. That's a traditional 911 deal. <laughs> you get all those great whirring noises and clankings and flat sick sounds when you fire it up. Very cool stuff. Uh, they also brought back the classic dashboard look. You see the little hump here. Uh, you know, very, very traditional 911. Uh, you know, anybody who's been driving one of these cars for years is going to recognize that instantly. Uh, and I'm going to get the top up, so I'm not going to put the seatbelt on for the moment. Uh, very nice sport wheel here, leather wrapped with the same natural stuff. You've got your Tiptronic shifters, uh, you've got your driver information stuff, your phone stuff, uh, Porsche Crest looking at you. Uh, what do we have? You know, like any Porsche, it's got the tack dead center in the middle. Uh, the gauge they feel is the most important, 7,000 red line. Uh, you got a little speedo, 200 mile an hour speedo off to the left as an afterthought. Uh, you've got your uh, water temp and your oil temp, actually oil pressure over there. And uh, water temp there, gas there, oil temp there. Nice set of full gauges in the car. Uh, this does have the Sport Chrono package, which is pretty great. Uh, if you're going to have a Tiptronic, you're going to want that because it really helps it out. It's more than just a stopwatch, which is a extensively what it just looks like but uh, when you activate that thing it also changes uh, the way the uh, the car shifts the uh, engine you know management and makes it uh, much much more sporty it works in conjunction with the PASM Porsche active suspension management uh, to give the car a really sporty vibe uh, we'll get into that in a sec. So down here you've got your uh, PCM with navigation. That's the Porsche command unit or command module. You know, nice nav screen, works fine. Uh, for 06, it's still pretty modern. Uh, you got your heated seats, you got your defrosts, eco. Oh, that yeah, that's just for the AC, thank God. Oh, God, that's the last thing we need. Our Porsche is getting ridiculous. The economy settings. Uh, you got your climate control here. 
Uh, this can manually raise and lower the rear wing. Uh, this activates the uh, uh, sport suspension. Well, let's press the sport button. You see instantly the suspension lights up uh, and uh, what you've got now is a car that's gonna drive a little bit different. Uh, it's working in conjunction with this uh, sport chrono. Let's see if I can get that thing to do anything. This is to cruise control. I'm using the wrong damn knob. Here it is. All right. Oh, that's over there. How the hell do you use this thing? I've, God, I've already forgotten. Unbelievable. Okay, well, the hell with it. We'll get into that later. But that's your sport chrono, and you can start. Well, wait a minute. I think it's in here. Hold on. Good lord. Let me get out of here. Wait a minute. Info oil chrono. There it is. Oh. Start timing. Okay, so now there we go. So now you've got your stopwatch ticking off. Uh, you can do lap times. You know, I mean, it's a bit silly and pretty damn cool at the same time. Uh, and look at that again, the beautiful leather on the dashboard, the stitching, just gorgeous. Uh, if we look behind this guy, you'll find the cup holders. You put some Dunkin' Donuts in there, Perrier. Uh, nice big glove box, CD storage. Uh, here's the window sticker with this car. Nice that it's still there. Two keys, window sticker, all that. Uh, if you're, you know, shopping for it, you can pause here, zoom in, and have a look at the option list on the car. But again, there you go, 107 grand for this thing. Uh, and uh, lots of nice options. So, speed yellow with natural leather cocoa, beautiful. Full book set, service records, original bill of sale. They didn't discount this car one penny, uh, being a special order. So I bet they made a ton on it. Those guys do good. Uh, here's your Tiptronic shifter. If you want to go over to manual, you can do this. When you have Sport activated uh, with the Sport Chrono thing, it becomes a true manual. It will not correct you. It will not, you know, if you get up into the 7,000 RPM range, it's not going to shift it because it thinks you're an idiot. It's going to let you be an idiot. So you have to be careful with this uh, Sport button if you are an idiot. If you want full-on control of the car, you turn that PSM off and uh, you'll be able to kill yourself no problem. So uh, I'm kidding. It's a very stable car and uh, works extraordinarily well to uh, keep you planted to the ground. Nice stuff. Uh, more leather here, a little ashtray if you want to smoke. You got a little outlet beer and place to put stuff. Not a lot of room for weapons. I suppose you could get one in here in the side pocket. But uh, anyway, very nice. Uh, to run the top, you push this guy here. You can see that little cover comes up. Up comes the folding soft top. Very nicely padded. Weird little grappling hook it has in the front. That seems to work fine. Keep your finger on the button and it'll run all four uh, windows up. Uh, now, unlike the 996, you can run all four windows up in this car with the top down. And uh, that makes it much quieter inside for, you know, highway speeds and such. So, uh, nice feature there. You can also run this top up to like 30 miles an hour, which I'm not going to do. But, you know, nice that you'd be able to roll through a parking lot and do that. All right, let me hop out. And you can have a look at the car with the top up. Very, very nice, and I like the brown top to match the interior. That was uh, nicely ordered by uh, that uh, spendy kid they had. Uh, unlike prior 911s, that windshield is raked back a little bit. They were very upright uh, in traditional 911s, which was terrible for aerodynamics, but great for visibility, and for whatever reason, uh, the people loved it. Little bumperettes, and all very nice. Heated rear window. Lovely, lovely. All right, let's get our seatbelt on and go for a spin. Let's see if we have any temperature in this thing yet. 175, yeah, it's pretty hot. I'm just gonna leave it in drive. I'm gonna leave the Sport activated, but the uh, PSM on. You know, there is no car with better steering in the world than a 911. I mean, if you want to be connected to the road, if you want to feel what perfection is like in terms of, uh, you know, connectivity, driver connectivity, this is the car. Hang on, look at my sunglasses on. It's bright as hell out here. Oh, gee, there I go, shifting it. 
if you press those tip buttons, it starts going into manual, so you gotta be careful of that when you're steering the thing. Okay, so an all-around sports car, the 911 is absolutely incredible, and I'll tell you why. I mean, it's a car that you can drive to work, you know, and drive very tamely, you know, like you would a Sentra or something, and it's just gonna be fine. It's gonna give you a nice ride, not too stiff. Uh, it's going to, uh, you know, give you reasonable gas mileage. And then you can go to the racetrack and turn in incredible time, zero to 60 in five seconds with the Tiptronic. Uh, top speed, yeah, I wanna say it's 180, 185 miles an hour with this thing. I mean, it is an incredible performer. Uh, you know, what in a Corvette, what, what's white knuckle, what's scary is a, you know, one hand on the wheel type affair in a 911. It's just that beautiful beautifully balanced, that beautifully connected. Uh, it's just an incredible machine to drive. And it's one of the, re you know, you would have to say that it really is the finest sports car in the world, without question. Listen to that thing. Wow, I mean, what a machine. The way that pulls so beautifully, evenly, all the way up the rev band, uh, you know, all the way to 7,000. Even if you're in normal mode, the minute the car senses that you're doing really spirited driving, uh, it will shift automatically to the sport settings uh, to satisfy you. And I mean, that's just the sort of engineering built into this car. So I'm not gonna bang through the gears, but I mean, you get the you get the idea. I mean, this is, again, a car that suits every situation. I mean, you can, you can drive it to work, you can drive it to the track, uh, you know, it's a nice weekend cruiser, and uh, it lives up to its reputation incredibly. Uh, you know, Porsche purists, you got to admit, the 997, they got it back. They really did. Oh, the sounds that you hear out of the back of this thing. Uh, there's just nothing else like it. You got your jet thrust door handles. It feels like a jet thrust when you hammer it. that again. Alright, so there it is. That's the most I'm going to rag on your new car. 06 911 S Cabriolet, 25,000 miles, one owner, service records, two keys, window sticker, 107 grand MSRP. Uh, this thing's a champion. What a machine. Come get it. Uh, if you have an interest, 239-298-8000 on the web at aenaples.com. Thanks so much for having a look. We really appreciate it, and we'll see you with the next one. Take care.